are the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 8th. Tropical Storm Christina becomes the 33rd storm so far in 2020. It's day 190 of the year so far, and we do have an area of interest in the Atlantic, Invest 98L, that also could develop off of the East Coast. Right now, we are giving 98L a 40% chance of development as it drops heavy rainfall in Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, as well as neighboring states. There's also a 10% area of interest that we've marked near the Windward and Southern Antilles, thanks going over to Puerto Rico. And you can also see Edward, which is extremely frontal, off the top right of the screen. In the East Pacific, it is extremely busy here with Tropical Storm Christina right now. There's also four areas of interest, both with a 10% area of interest. Then there's a chance of formation, I should say. Sorry about that. As Christina does push off towards the northwest, the system behind it will probably form at some point. In the Western Pacific, it is the same story as usual. Nothing active and nothing remains on the radar to watch over the next few days. In the Indian Ocean, the 40% area of interest has weakened significantly today and it is down to a 10% area, area of interest right now. The India Meteorological Department was watching this and they were giving this just an area of low pressure with no tropical cyclone formation chances. In the Southern Hemisphere, some models were indicating a tropical cyclone formation near, in, near Indonesia earlier today, but that they have since backed off of that. As such, there is no nothing active in the Southern Hemisphere. So this is Tropical Storm Christina right now. We are giving 40 miles per hour based on its absolutely terrible appearance and a pressure 1,004 millibars. CDPS stage zero as no land areas are under threat right now. Right now we are currently forecasting for the storm to move in the immediate vicinity quite fast off towards the northwest becoming a category one hurricane, probably reaching its peak intensity around 100 to 105 miles per hour around 48 to 72 hours from now and then weakening as it pushes off towards the west. And it could weaken rather quickly after that, reaching toward the day five to day six frame. This is how Christina looks right now on the satellite imagery. It's looking rather appalling. It's got several competing centers right now, hence why it looks so garbage right now. However, it is intended to become a hurricane and it would not surprise me if this is quite an unusual situation where we have several centers competing and they eventually form into one dominant one. This is a look at the North Atlantic right now, Saharan dust once again dominating the eastern part of the basin, as well as some near the Windward Islands potentially. And then you can see the large train of showers and thunderstorms towards the east of MS 90 l up towards Edward, ex Edward I should say. Heavy rainfall probably being reported on Bermuda as a result of that. And the Invest 98L could develop off the East Coast, 40% chance right now. This is a look at the Gulf of Mexico. There is a lot of dry air once again in the southwest part of the Gulf of Mexico. And a lot of thunderstorms blowing up across Florida as we normally see in this time of the year in that very tropical climate over there. And then some rainfall extending across Louisiana pushing into parts of Mississippi as a result of 98L in the area. This is a look at the Eastern Pacific right now with the three temperature area of interest. The other one is just barely off screen. The Central Pacific area of interest yesterday was looking pretty good. It has since degraded in appearance and that will probably not form as it pushed off towards the west. It's the same story in the Western Pacific. There is absolutely nothing to be seen on the radar in the next few days as the as shear remains quite high in the basin with a frontal system extending across Japan and parts of China, pushing down towards Taiwan a little bit. The South Pacific is equally the same, nothing active in the South Pacific at all. Perhaps a few thunderstorms blowing up near the Solomon Islands and near Indonesia, but nothing remains to be seen tropical cyclone-wise for quite a long time in this area. Here's a look at the Indian Ocean, you can see that potential tropical cyclone off the coast of India pushing towards Oman very slow moving right now. Probably lots of heavy rainfall reports being reported along the coastline. 
And then there's a lot of showers and thunderstorms in the Bay of Bengal right now. Probably producing heavy rainfall in those areas as well. This is a look at sea surface temperatures right now. The Indian Ocean warming up quite nicely as well as the Western Pacific. The Eastern Pacific looking quite on the sad side, unfortunately. I think it would normally be quite better for it in that time of the year. The Atlantic is indeed once again warming up quite nicely, much above average in their busy season ahead in the Atlantic. On this day, we were looking back at 2005, where Hurricane Dennis was making landfall on the coast of Cuba with winds of 145 miles per hour, would later go on to peak at 150 in the Gulf of Mexico. We also had future Emily as an invest on this day. Emily, of course, would peak as a Category 5 later right down the road, and ex Cindy was moving off of the Gulf Coast. We also did have Tropical Depression Emong moving into China. So, these are the names on the naming list. Faye may not be in the too distant future, followed by Gonzalo and Hannah in the Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking up for Douglas and Elida. Those probably won't live up to their 2002 counterpart, but we'll see. In the Central Pacific, Hone and Iona are the next two names there. Those probably won't be in the next few days. In the Western Pacific, Sinlaku and Hagopit don't unfortunately cannot look on, look likely to form within the next few days, I should say. In the North Indian Ocean, Gatsi and Navarre are the next names over there. In the Southern Hemisphere, Imogen is the next name in the Australian region. We won't be getting that until later on this year, in the latter part of the year. Uh, in the Southwest Indian Ocean, Alicia is the next name there. And it's Yolanda in the feet in the South Pacific region. We'll have another tropical weather bulletin tomorrow with the latest on Christina. You can follow Force 13's outlets. You can check out our new cyclone tracker on our website, force-13.com forward slash cyclone tracker. You can also follow us on youtube.com forward slash force13. Subscribe if you haven't. You can follow us on Facebook for more updates on there, as well as Twitter. We also do publish updates on there as well. You can become an ultimate fan of our YouTube channel to see the full list of YouTube benefits. Visit youtube.com forward slash form 13 forward slash join. With a special thanks to our ultimate fans and our patrons this month as they continue to bring funds towards our way. You can also check out our growing merch store at store.force13.com as well. It continues to grow to this day. You can also check out our Discord server using the link in the description below.